I don't even know if I should talk about this, but lately I just felt a shift. Happy Valentine's Day! So yeah, today's Valentine's Day, but it is also time for me to start my seeds. And you don't need expensive girlates at all. Um, we do have a girlate. We are actually going to try that method as well. I want to preface this by saying that I am not a master gardener. I've only been gardening for maybe the last year on my own. I have a little bit of knowledge, but not a lot of knowledge. <laughs> but I'm just sharing with you what we do. Anyways, this is the cheapest option, in my opinion, to start seeds and it works very well especially for the seeds like i have onions and kale right now growing they take a long time to grow um but i can just set these out even in the winter and they act as little greenhouses so i'm going to show you how to do that today super simple so the things you're going to need is a potting mix of some sort it doesn't have to be a particular brand i've had a success with just miracle grow so you're going to need that you're going to need a clean out empty milk jug and you're gonna wanna cut the entire thing around up until you get to the handle. I've learned that that helps a lot. Um, just to be able to bend a back, check on your seedlings, etc., and a seed of choice. So I have kale left that I need to plant, so we're gonna plant that today. And you're gonna need a thing of duct tape. I'm gonna put potting soil in here. There's seriously nothing better than getting my hands in dirt. And I know that sounds weird, but I just love the way it feels. I love the way it smells and I really cannot wait for this spring to be out in my garden. <laughs> so you want your potting soil to be super light and fluffy and potting soil, or no, yeah, potting soil usually is, I use just a seed starting potting soil. So I'm gonna go through and plant the rest of these. I don't know if I'll be able to show you. See, kale seeds are so tiny and very hard to just get. So I kind of just poke a tiny, tiny hole. I dump a couple in my hand. Actually, I just dumped the entire thing in my hand. There you go. And I put maybe two to three to four seeds in each hole. So now that we got that, we're gonna wet this down so that they have some moisture in here. After you are done getting that watered a bit, I'm just gonna close it. I'm gonna close it like this. And then we're gonna take our duct tape. And you're just gonna really, I've learned it's easier if you wrap it here first. Hopefully I can pop that back out. I'm really noticing it's a little disgruntled. It's just kind of push it back together. It does not have to be perfect. top off of this and that's just because it lets in a lot of air and a lot of uh, ventilation for the seedlings but I'm also going to leave it off for the fact that it will give me water when it rains or when it snows so I don't even have to really bother watering with it. Take your sharpie and you're gonna label what this is and what day you planted them. Now with the kale I expect to see this seedlings pop up within two weeks. I have some that are already sprouting outside that I will show you. Sit this outside somewhere where there's a lot of sun for most of the day. Um, I set them on my little window so I'll show you. Um, you don't necessarily have to bring these in if it gets below freezing temperatures. I like to do that sometimes depending on when I remember to do it um, but it really should not require any maintenance at all. So I'm kind of getting rained on a little bit but I wanted to show you the kale that I already started. I don't know if I'll be able to like peek in here and see kind of thing. So you can see all the little kale seedlings. They're all popping up and it's so exciting. So yeah that's what I do. I just place them out on my little balcony that I have here and then just let them go. You could also probably do it with, uh, with soda bottles um, like the two liters. I'm going to try that because I have some from the Super Bowl that's left over. So we're going to try to do that. I do have a cold frame that outside that my husband built me that I'm probably going to transfer those to eventually. Um, onions and kale, they're very cold hardy and actually they thrive in the cold, uh, especially kale. Kale will become sweeter in the cold. 
So it's very, I'm just very excited to see how the harvest is gonna go, how they're gonna taste, um, come when it's ready for them to pop up. So all of my potatoes that I got from the store are bad, so now we're gonna go down to my really dingy, creepy basement to grab some potatoes from my pantry. This is my little setup that I have right now. I don't know. So yeah, this is not much right now. And that's just because it's just towards the planting season and it's gonna be harvest season. So I'm going to grab, I think, two things of potatoes and we're gonna head back upstairs. We're supposed to get actually another snowstorm tonight. All these big branches just snapped off our pine tree and I don't really want to waste the pine needles. Um, so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna make some pine needle soda. I have swing top bottles I'll show you, but that's what I'm gonna do with this so it doesn't just decompose. At least we get some use out of it. This one's gonna have some words with me because <laughs> um, I'm just looking at this, I'm like, you know, this could be good for herbs in my windowsill. He's got, I'm gonna have so many of like soda pop bottles. I'm gonna have milk jugs laying around everywhere. He's gonna be like, woman, <laughs> get it under control. <laughs> so it's nap time, so I have some time now to make some pine needle soda. So this is essentially kind of like a sourdough starter where you're capturing the wild yeast and that's what makes it carbonated. Um, and that's what ferments over the next couple of days. I have swing top bottles. These things are great. You get them on Amazon. My mother-in-law gave me these she didn't need them anymore, so I'm gonna use them for that. Um, what I like to do though, is if I'm doing like a large batch, like I am currently, I like having a small swing top bottle. This one came from TJ Maxx. I like having a small one, so it's kind of like my sample out of the entire batch. Um, like obviously the ratios are gonna be a little less, but I'm going to check this one rather than opening those ones and checking them, so. It smells so good. I love the smell of pine. Who, honestly though, who doesn't? Well, there might be a couple people, but anyways. Um, so with pine trees, you have to know how to identify them because there is poisonous types of pine trees as with any plant identification. So I have a white pine in my backyard and how you can tell, I'm gonna show you. How you can tell it's white pine is that they come in a cluster of five. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Um, and they're just these little clusters on the branches. I think you can do this with Douglas fir. I however don't have a Douglas fir on my property and I also don't know how to identify that. Um, but I would stick to probably white pine. White pine is probably your best option. Just be extremely careful because I don't want anybody getting poisoned or anything like that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna take the needles off of the branch portion part and we're going to just stick them in here and I'm gonna wash them off. Now with this part, I'm getting, I already know I'm getting pine sap all over my hand. Um, some people say you don't want to wash off the pine needles because you're getting rid of a lot of the natural yeast, etc. I am definitely washing these pine needles off, at least rinsing them, because I have squirrels and I have wildlife and yeah, we're just gonna rinse them for sure. If you keep the pine needle intact with the little end pieces, sometimes people say that gives you a better pine flavor. If you don't want to do that, you don't have to. take your little swing top bottle and you're just gonna 
put them in the bottle. It's easier if you do the end side where their little caps are that are holding all the needles together and cluster is. If you do it that side down, they just go in easier, go in easier that way. Oh my. I used um, pure cane sugar or whatever it's called or like a raw sugar type of thing so it's not going to dissolve the best but over the next couple days it's going to dissolve. You want to put this in a warm place not in direct sunlight um, so that it helps it ferment. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this one on top of my fridge. I'm going to sit for the next couple days about three to five days. You can burp it if you want to um, just be weary that if you don't burp it the carbonation is going to be probably a lot. Um, when I burp it, I have less carbonation because you are letting some out, obviously. So I usually wait three to five days, five days usually probably being the best for both flavor and for both carbonation. I may post a video update um, when I get around to another video. You may be wondering why pine needle soda. Well, pine needles have a ton of vitamin C in them, like more than an orange does or more than orange juice does. And so they're really beneficial for that um, immunity wise and just I like drinking it compared to regular soda. It's way healthier. You can also do pine needle tea. Um, there's, you can research all the benefits for it. I don't even know if I should talk about this, but lately I've just felt a shift. Um, and, and you know, honestly, maybe I'm just overthinking it. I am an overthinker, but um, it is an election year and we all know what happened the last election year. And so, I don't know, I'm just putting a lot of food away. I just, I feel the urge to put food away. Canned goods, um, you can get a couple extra canned goods each time you go to the grocery store or um, like putting away rice, putting away things that I can make easy. Um, not necessarily for like an apocalyptic kind of thing because I just, I don't think, I think if that was to happen and the system shut down, we, everyone's a goner. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how much you prep. It doesn't matter how much effort you put into things unless you have a community of like-minded people around you it's just you're not gonna make it i don't know i'm not trying to be doomsday or anything i just i don't know i don't know how to express it and i, I feel like i'm crazy for saying it um but yeah so i don't know i guess my message is just like if you can put food away put food away i'm excited for this upcoming gardening season i'm going to be showing a lot of what we're doing we were going to get chickens this spring but we decided to not get chickens this spring which is like because I, I would love like some hens and i would love eggs we go through eggs like they're candy and luckily my friend um actually i buy eggs from her and her flock and they're really great eggs and so i don't really have to worry about necessarily getting farm fresh eggs because i do already get those but it would have been nice to have your own chickens that I can just get them instead of relying on somebody else but that's just not in the cards for us but I'm a little little bummed really for the best it's probably it's somehow it's going to be for the best I'm just going to keep telling myself that when we bought this property it was it's an extremely fixer-upper like this dining room was I think purple like bright purple it was either no this dining room was bright lime green and the kitchen was purple um yeah, it was a big fixer upper, but the previous owners have two sheds. One's like a garage that we use for tools. Um, and my husband has like a workshop in there and just storage of like our lawnmower, etc. And then the other shed that we had to completely clean out because they left so much junk behind. We had to get a dumpster and it was just the most annoying thing ever. <laughs> other shed, I don't know what we're gonna do with it. I think it's gonna be our like garden and potting shed and like to dry things. My husband is growing tobacco this summer, which will be very interesting he smokes pipe um occasionally not frequently just occasionally um so that'll be interesting i don't know that was originally going to be our chicken coop but it's just too close to the house that i feel like because you know we all know chickens attract bugs and mice and we already have a mouse problem in our basement um like that has been under control but we do live right next to a field and i would rather just not attract more mice 
in the general vicinity of my home and they would be right outside her bedroom window and i i don't know i don't know i don't think i want chickens right outside my bedroom window i love the sound of chickens love it but i just don't want them right outside my bedroom window <laughs> but because we're not spending the money on getting a chicken startup thing going we're going to be spending a lot of it on our garden this year we already have big plans to expand um fencing is very expensive <laughs> so we might take our chances and not fence it in but we'll see we also have a deer population that does come pretty close to the house. So that makes me a little nervous for not fencing it in, but we'll see how it goes. We're just trial and error. I feel like that's the best way to learn. All right, well, thank you for watching this long. If you've made it to the end of this video, please let me know what types of videos you wanna see, what you would want me to talk about. Um, I would love to be all ears. Sometimes I don't know what to do with YouTube because it is longer form content. And I just, again, I feel like no one wants to watch long form content from somebody who just like rarely leaves the house. But, um, but yeah, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. So thanks for watching.